them drinks, and then they went back to his home where she consented to having sex. It ended with him killing her and the body being dismembered and mutilated. Again, no blood was found in the veins or the arteries. They were, the parts were completely drained. The only body part, and I'm, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. The only body part never uh, recovered is, um, are her genitals. Okay. Which is horrific. Um, please look at the abusive husband, but they dismiss him quickly. He has an alibi and he can confirm that he was in North Carolina. So they, you know, start searching through past criminal history of anybody that might be in the area. They quickly come upon Marquette Mm -hmm. due to the nature of the crime and the, you know, likeness to his other crimes. He's, he's definitely makes the short list. Yeah. Um, a couple of days later, his mobile home is searched. They find evidence that Betty was there, and he's arrested once more for manslaughter. And like I said, he he completely gives them any details that they want, and he uh, admits to the crime. Yeah, see, he was serial killer before they termed that coin serial killer. For sure. Um, and then while in custody, he admits to another murder that actually took place place in the previous year in 1974 um this is a crime that um it is it's solved but her identity is still unknown to this day that's sad yeah um so the unidentified young woman suffered the same fate as joan and betty Mm -hmm. um unfortunately you know we know well the story now he met this young woman at a bar he says they ended up going back to his place. He killed her, dismembered her body. Um, she may or may not have consented to the sex. There's no way to confirm that. Yeah. Marquette led authorities to a shallow grave where they found most of her body, but her head is missing. Um, she's never identified. There are no missing persons reports that police can track back to her as possible leads. Mm-hmm. And he's actually not charged with her murder, from what I can tell. Okay. Right. So he is, however, charged again with first-degree manslaughter and sentenced again to life in prison, this time with no chance of parole. And when psychiatrists are asked to interview him and evaluate him, they find him to be completely calm, and their only conclusion is that he cannot handle rejection from females. And that it creates a murderous rage he cannot control. Huh. So somebody tells you no, and a flip, you flip your switch, and you freak out and mm. decide to kill them and completely <laughs> dismember their body. Yeah. Very, very logical. No. Yeah. Um, but, again, the science has changed quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, I would think that... Anybody profiling him now mm-hmm. would have suspected that, first of all, there was there was a step in between the crimes yeah. um, that would have been missed. And they would have thought to ask about things, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, they would have said, probably, more than likely, he's likely to do this again. Yeah. He's, he, these are insatiable habits that he has. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's it's kind of sad, but okay, I, you know, I wish there was more known about his early years because that could definitely tell you, like, what sets him off, or even if he had mommy issues. You know what I mean? And that's what it sounds right. like, but I don't know. Something. I mean, something happened to where if if they were correct and it's reject, rejection that he has the issue with yeah. from females. Yeah, something happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So today, Richard Marquette is alive. Oh. He's 85 years old. He sits in the state penitentiary in Salem, Oregon. Okay. Again, he is described as a model prisoner. He's involved in many groups, including like a veterans group, a Catholic group. Mm-hmm. Um, it, his life now consists of sorting out recyclables. He doesn't really have a choice. No. Um, so unlike... Previously, though, this time, good behavior is not going to get him out on parole, and he will be there until he passes away. And that's Richard Marquette. 
Wow. Yeah. Gruesome crimes. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And yeah, I really, I mean, I was kind of disappointed because I did really want to know, like, what what happened in his childhood? What does his childhood consist of? There's just, I I'm, I'm, couldn't find it. Maybe there's a book on it, or maybe, maybe there's an opportunity there to write a book. Uh, maybe. If anyone's listening and you're an author. Yeah. I won't even need any royalties. <laughs> I would just like a first copy of the book. Thank you. Signed first copy of the book. Signed. Yes. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty gruesome. Um, but I, and then I questioned too, you know, he, he readily admitted to the crime that he committed in 74 mm-hmm. of the woman who's not been identified. He gave that information to them when he was arrested in 75. So, I mean, is that it? Is that his, his crime in, in its entirety? If he gave that information, why wouldn't he have given other information? I don't know. I mean, it sounds like he just, every time he's caught, he just confesses everything because he, Confess to those three when he was only questioned about the one. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But again, he could be like Gary Ridgway and just, I don't even remember all of them. That's very true. I mean, that's very true. But I mean, he readily confesses to, ah, man. Yeah, because even Ridgway, he didn't remember like all of them. No, and I, I mean, that's the thing is you're not, he knew Joan. Because he knew her from school. So obviously he could say, yes, this was Joan Cottle. She was, you know, about this year, you know, years old. And this is how I know her. Betty, he found in a nightclub. Mm -hmm. Who knows what their conversation consisted of. um, But she was identifiable. Mm -hmm. So he's not necessarily... These people don't necessarily ask these questions of, what's your life story? Tell me all about you before I kill you. You know? So I can see why women or, you know, any victim, Mm -hmm. men or women, go unidentified. Because you're you're not looking to make a connection here. Yeah. You're (laughs) missed connections. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it's sad stuff. It really makes me sad when, you know, Betty's story was just already tragic. Her life was horrible, it sounded, Mm -hmm. and it ended tragically. And then for some woman, you know, young woman to be unidentified, however many years later, that's 74, so 40-ish years later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 50 almost. It's it, it's sad because nobody's looking for you. Nobody yeah. knows where you went, or if they're looking, they don't know to look there. So I don't know. My hope would be someday we cover a, a story of somebody identified, and yeah. somebody somewhere listens to the podcast and says that sounds familiar. One that would day. be like my ultimate happy moment. One I think. day. One day. It may happen. It may. Yeah, you never know. So that's what we got for you this week. Again, we just want to thank everybody for listening, all the support, and, you know, keep it up. Mm-hmm. We, we're happy to do it. We're having fun, except for the technical <laughs> difficulties. Yeah, well, it sounds like they worked themselves out. All, <laughs> but on the other hand, I'm excited. Yay! Why are you excited now? Well, I'm excited and I'm sad. Why? For the podcast. Why? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this is our last episode where Jessica will record in the closet. <laughs> if you don't know, and we don't really, t- but Jessica sits in a closet because it's soundproof, and I sit outside because we haven't soundproofed the room, and we figured one person without the echo is better than two people. So the next podcast will actually be able to look at each other. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what the dogs are going to do because the two little ones come in with me yeah. and they nap while I'm, they're like laid down and curled around mm-hmm. and napping. So that's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. I'll have to set them up a little blanket or something to lay on while we're, Maybe. but I am excited, yes, that I'll be able to look you in the eyes. 
We will make a connection. Yeah. Most of it will be rolling my eyes, but <laughs> yes. You will be rolling your eyes or yeah. I will be rolling my eyes? Probably both. I, Probably yeah. more you. Yeah. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of raised eyebrows, I, I suspect. Yeah. Yes. But I'm excited because like, we've soundproofed the room. Just updates for you guys. We've soundproofed the room. We've put up our acoustic panels. Yeah. We're going to bring Jessica out of the closet. Woohoo! And There's uh, nothing wrong with coming out of the closet, y'all. No. Do what you got to do. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we'll we'll actually be sitting at a desk and staring at each other like professional podcasters, quote yes. unquote. So, yay, big yeah. changes, Next big step. but little changes. <laughs> well, it is a big change. I mean, we're just kind of doing this as we making this up as we go along. We didn't trying things out, and, and we're we're also learning as we go along. So, I mean, it's it's. It, it's frustrating at times, especially like today we tried to record and you got all these delays, technical pops. And so, yeah. like I said, we're learning as we go and I'm glad you guys are on this journey with us. Um, I mean, if you guys ever have any questions about making a podcast, uh, you know, just get a hold of us at what happens in the woods.com. Uh, I'd be glad to try to answer questions. I am by no means am I an expert, but um, I will try and help anybody out the, any way that I can trying to be a semi-technical person on this show. But I'm excited. I think Big for changes. you, though, you've, I'm like, you've done a lot of research and there's a lot of things that you would like to do. Mm -hmm. But financially, for us, they're not. It's just not, you know, feasible. I got a sugar mama. So. <laughs> we'll send her in. Mm -hmm. She can cover your roadcaster. Mm -hmm. Come out of the closet. <laughs> Yeah, I She's I mean <laughs> She's in the closet. Oh no. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, we are exactly what you said. We're just kind of learning this as we're going along and hopefully it's just getting better and better. So here's to here's to two hundred and fifty more downloads. Yay. Yay. Thank you everybody. Uh stay home. Stay safe. And stay out of the damn bars. That seems to cause a lot of issues. Yes. Yeah, don't be going and hanging out with bars and going home with people you don't know. That's where shit goes wrong. Yeah. And as always, stay out of the damn woods. Bye. <laughs> Bye.